Welcome to your first NVIDIA App Module Session 3, Objects. In the previous sessions, we talked about what App Modules are. We talked about uh, what scripts are. And I think for the past few sessions, you may have realized that App Modules are more than scripts. And you now know the real definition of a script when it comes to writing app modules. A script being a specific method in the app module that is carried out when you press a command. Uh, for example, if you press, say, from Skype, if you press Control NVIDIA number 0, and that Control NVIDIA number 1 and whatnot, uh, you will hear the most recent messages, provided that you are in the chat window. And these are bound to scripts. And you also have got a chance to perhaps, some of you may have a chance to uh, test or experiment with, uh, with scripts. Where last time we were here, we talked about uh, having a script that announces your name. And I hope that you enjoy, I hope that you got a chance to experiment more with scripts. But app modules are more than scripts. They have other goodies in there. And as you will be writing app modules, uh, you will come to know that all that really is, it's, a, it's really an object that allows you to uh, manipulate or rather identify other objects on for the app and do something with it or provide some enhancement or workarounds, if you may. So the next two sessions, the, uh, the next two sessions, uh, whoever is that, voice activation, if I want to turn it off, please. Yeah. So, Someone has voice activation on, uh, press control shift A. If you have a PC client, thanks. Uh, so for the next two sessions, uh, it'll be, yeah, the, if you're writing an app module, the next two sessions are very crucial in that we'll be talking about the very heart and soul of app modules, the objects and events. Uh, somebody asked on Twitter if we will be talking about overlay classes, that is coming up after events because we need to talk about what objects are, what object hierarchy is, some of the properties that objects carry, as well as what events NVDA can handle before we can move on to overlay classes because overlay classes are really a collection of routines that are used to provide specific workarounds or features when encountering a control. So that's what uh, the course will be for the next two weeks. It will be very crucial. And after that will be over the classes. And the very last thing will be accessibility API, such as iAccessible and UIA and get a chance to perhaps present your app module. Uh, if you, if you are willing, that is. Uh, so, uh, if you brought your app modules with you, if you brought your app with you, uh, I recommend that you, that we open it, open it up because you'll be, start coding it in about a few minutes. And in my case, uh, I'll be using, uh, a team talk here because, uh, we can talk about object navigation using team talk, um, or perhaps I can open Fire Explorer in Windows 10 or let me see if I can open settings app from Windows 10 and uh, excuse me. Now this is the settings uh, where um, I have where the, we do actually have an app module for this and uh, I guess you, it, I think it will be safe to use this module for now. So if you have Windows 10, it'll be Windows I. Uh, it, you don't have to have a settings open. It'll be, it'll be suffice to open the app that you are writing the app module for. So um, let me uh, start by asking the question, what do you think when you hear the word object? Could be something like a table, like, like a table here, or, or like a mic, or it might be speaker, or it might be an object. Could be like, like being objective, trying to not put your like personal things. At least try to 
reduce that in some cases. Object could be the goal that you wish to to re achieve and whatnot, uh, perhaps. So uh, there are many diff different definitions of optical object. Now, in the computer programming world, and in extension for us, in this case, would be in the app module world, in NVIDIA world, in fact, an object is a class coming to life. Uh, I'm sure you might be asking, what is a class? A class is a definition of an object on paper. You can have uh, things like a person, uh, and that person could have name, a, an A. A person could be, could, uh, well, he, he or she could have age, occupation, or in some cases where, she, where he or she lives, and in some cases, or could denote the position of the person. Or in some cases, other uh, classes might be what kind of, uh, like it could be a contact, it could be an appointment, it could be a class. Like you have the start date and end date, time and whatnot. You could have the class that describes an object like a table, a class that describes a video game character, a class that describes a world that people that people can simulate and when all those kind of things can be described on paper using classes and objects are really those classes on paper coming to life and if you were here for scripts if you are listening to if you listen to scripts you may have noticed that we were actually defining a class uh, as in you would type class at module capital A, PP, and capital M, O, D, U, L, E, and then it would what's called inherit from something else. Inherit means you have a base class, and somehow you want to customize it somehow from another class. So this is so you have so for example you have an employ you have a person class that represents a person, and then perhaps you want to say this person is an employee, and you can create a class that inherits from person called employee and then you can add additional details or change how certain things function and in fact this is how nvda objects function in the real world you have a you have a specific definition or a overview of an object that nvda treats that nvda can work with on top of that are uh, what's called API classes, where each accessibility API has different ways of working with objects. For example, getting the next sibling or next object, previous object, and whatnot. We'll get to what those term terms are in a second. And then on top of that, perhaps, on top of the, say, an accessible object, someone can write an object, a class, that describes a specific list view or specific slider and whatnot. And these classes come to life when you actually encounter them. And in fact, that's what really app modules uh, derives the power from a base app module that's stored in, M that's stored in the app module handlers module that provides necessary features like what the name of the app is. If it is a 64-bit app or not, we'll get to see it late soon. Uh, and then once you have those features, all you're doing in the app module is you are creating it a class, this is what's called a subclass or a child class that actually will let you enhance it using your own routines, scripts, event handlers, looking at specific objects and whatnot. So in summary, a class is a specification of something on paper, like an object or a control in fact, in GUI programming. And the objects are really classes on paper coming to life. So in that's what GUI, that's what's really the, what objects are. And in the world of graphical user interfaces or GUIs, object really refers to controls on screen. So you can have, say for, hello. So say you can have uh, a Microsoft Word open. And then on screen, you have a typical uh, document window where you can type text, you can do proofreading, you can bold text, you can do all sorts of things. Surrounding that uh, document, 
are toolbar, status bars, and the recent versions of word ribbon. A toolbar like where a toolbar on top of the screen that provides context sensitive uh, options. Like if you select a uh, home tab, you can save, you can open one. That you can, if you select insert tab, you can insert tables and whatnot. All those context sensitive uh, options are up there on the on ribbon. In older versions, it would be menu bar. And below that will be toolbars, icons, and whatnot. And uh, below the uh, text edit window will be status bar that tells you how many words you've entered, how many words are selected, what kind of view it's in, like reading view, print view, etc., and so on. And these would be technically called a widget. A widget is a graphical element, uh, an element in a graphical user interface. And in NVD world, these would be termed objects. Uh, so that's what really objects in NVD world are. These are specific controls in user interfaces like documents, toolbars, menu bars, status bar, buttons, edit fields, combo boxes, sliders, or even the entire user interface or the shell or the desktop. A shell is what users will see when they use an operating system like Windows Explorer on Windows, Finder in Mac OS, or other desktop um, environments like Unity on Ubuntu um, and other uh, and other systems. Uh, just as uh, people, just as we have genealogies for people like whose parents, siblings, child, grandchildren, whatnot, objects in GUI interfaces for many of them are organized into what's called a hierarchy. A hierarchy denotes which objects are parents of which, which con object contains other objects, the next and previous items, toolbars and whatnot. So back with, going back to the Microsoft Word example, when you look at the document, uh, there is a window called, the, there is a, the foreground window, the Microsoft Word foreground window. And this foreground window is a parent of all, or rather is an ancestor of all Microsoft Word controls that you that you see or would interact on screen, like status bar, edit window, and whatnot. And um, below this foreground window will be the true child objects or various parts of the app. So for example, like edit window and so forth. And these, have sibling relationships. In other words, you can there these some of them are grouped under one common parent object, like the menu bar, edit window, status bar are all siblings of each other. They are grouped under the Microsoft Word foreground window. Or to put it this way, Microsoft Word edit window is the child, one of the I believe is the child. I mean uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. It's one of the descendants or a child of Microsoft Word foreground window and conversely the word window for foreground is one of the ancestors or the parents of the Microsoft Word actual the actual edit window uh, so this is actually standard for many graphical user interfaces and um, a, spe a specific a sorry a specific Exhibit API exhibits this tendency. Uh, UI automation is really, when you look, uh, UI automation, the way it presents stuff to screen readers is really a tree. So on the top, the root of all objects on Windows, at least the ones that you can interact with, is the desktop object or the shell object. That actually, there's no parent on top of that. That actually include all the windows that you see. And then below the shell object, the a desktop object, which I wish which we'll get to explore shortly, uh, below are all the windows for programs like uh, uh, like Microsoft Word, for example, or Windows Explorer and so forth. And the other elements of the desktop shell, for example, a button to open start menu, uh, system tray icon, uh, parent window, clock some in, in some cases, 
program manager window and all those. So let me actually demonstrate what I mean by parent-child relationship hierarchy. Right now, I am located at settings, settings window. Let me press NVIDIA numpad up arrow or NVIDIA numpad 8 and list. list this because we were focused on system list item focus read only not selected one of nine NVIDIA tab that shows you what Windows thinks is the focus item. Now we're at the list of categories. Let me press NVIDIA numpad up arrow again. Settings window. The foreground window and above that settings window settings. The overall foreground desktop window and no, containing object. no more so that tells us that we are at the root of all windows or the shell object now let me press nvidia numpad down arrow if you want to you can follow along with me in this unknown unknown one that we don't know what it is sometimes it's just an empty string for a name switch to the current application button that's an abstract start, start button i'm moving i'm using nvidia numpad Right arrow or NVIDIA numpad 6 to move through the components of the shell window. 11, I got Korean uh, input IME. This will be the system tray. The actual icons. Running applications toolbar. Microsoft Edge button, button. And this is a taskbar. Moving to right. Now we're, we're going through all the windows that are open at the moment. Team Talk 5 Classic Reads Type Trademark Joseph Lee. New Downloads Internet Explorer with Unknown. Google Internet Explorer with Win 10 Pro X Inbox Gmail Unknown. 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 So many unknown windows. Window. Number and system. Desktop window. And so for somehow I could not get into the last one. So that is object hierarchy so nvidia numpad down arrow moves you through the child and so effectively when you when we say moving between parent and child effectively what we're doing is we are expanding and narrowing our traversal scope when we move to parent and children respectively and when we move by siblings we can navigate what are the objects? Oops, my bad. <laughs> that's up. My apologies. So, uh, so NVIDIA down arrow that's child, and you can use NVIDIA numpad left and run pad right to move between siblings or what NVIDIA would think is a sibling. Uh, the objects that this parent uh, possesses or contains possesses. And um, to get a real true tree or the true hierarchy, you would do this. I will be pressing, uh, and I will be opening NVDA menu. preferences, General settings, and I press C to open. Renew cursor C. Renew cursor settings dialog. Follow system focus checkbox check out plus F. I have to turn off this. Simple renew mode checkbox checked. Simple review mode is enabled, which means that NVIDIA will exclude what it considers just layout objects, like just a window, uh, unnecessary objects and whatnot when you traverse through it. And if you uncheck this, it will move through all tree, the entire tree. The parent may contain windows that NVIDIA might have skipped if you use simple review mode. Objects do have each of ob NVIDIA object does have methods that allows you to move between parent children siblings using the true tree or with simple review mode on That is object hierarchy and we're speaking of object met methods that NVIDIA provides for objects uh, the and the properties that it can it can uh, deduce uh, NVIDIA can tell you the name of the object it can tell you what kind of object it is, like a roll, like a button, edit field, slider, etc. It can tell you what kind of object it is. So it can tell you if it's an accessible object, if it's a UI object. It can tell you the object handle that reports to NVDA. It can tell you what kind, of, what app that this object belongs to. You can tell it can tell you um, what's the display text that's written to the screen at the moment. You, it can tell you all sorts of things. And it does have uh, methods to move to the next previous 
uh, and so forth. We'll get to encounter it soon when we actually get into coding. So that's the object hierarchy, traversal, and attributes. Um, at this point, are there any comments or questions before we move on to practical examples? All right, let's get into practical side of things. Now, what I'm going to show you are methods that you can use uh, from app modules to traverse through objects and obtain uh, various object properties. And I'll be using both the NVIDIA Log Viewer and the Python console to do this. Uh, let me, I'm in TimTalk right now, so let me press uh, NVDA. Michael. Let me focus my Michael, name Michael, first. Michael, Sorry, Michael. Uh, Michael Chopper uh, is here. So let me press NVIDIA F1. But before that, let me press Control NVIDIA F1. Currently running application is TeamTalk. Find classic .exe and currently loaded module is TT Classic. Right. So that is the app module that we are using for this one. Uh, so let me press NVIDIA F1 and see what it tells us. NVIDIA F1 is the developer info command that tells you all the things that you need to know about objects that you're dealing with. NVIDIA log viewer, edit multi-line read only, info global commands dot global commands dot script navigator object dev info 1129. So let me, let's go through this. If you want, you can follow along with this. Developer info for navigator object, name, Adolf Lee. Role, role tree, United States, state focusable, state selectable, state focused, state selected. Let me repeat the second role, line. Role tree, new item. A role tree, this comes from an app a module called Control, control types, types that actually lists all the roles that the object could be in. States, state focusable, state selectable, state focused, state selected. And this is not all the roles that can be in, that's the state. Yeah, roles and right, roles, it has. Last time I checked, there are different roles, of up to 100 plus roles, but some of them... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a bunch, a bunch more states, states that different roles can be in, like checked and unchecked and selected and focused and whatnot. Right, right. Thanks, Derek. That's Derek D. Reamer, folks. Thanks, Derek. Um, so there are many states, like, uh, there are more states than these. Like, if it's checked, if it's pop-up, like if you open a context menu or something, it can be... Invisible is off screen. All those. Derek Reamer left channel is focusable. True. Is focusable right now. It can be moved to the keyboard. As focus. True. In this case, yes, it is because we have now moved to this. And the next one is. Python object. Less NVIDIA object. Start dynamic tree. New item outside item accessible object at zero x zero four easy zero four one zero greater. Well, don't worry about the hex that's after that. That's the address. This tells you what kind of object it is. We know that this is Python object. Less NVIDIA object. Start dynamic tree. New item outside item accessible. This is an I accessible object. Derek Reamer joined channel. So it's uh, it's powered by MSAA or Microsoft Active Accessibility. Somehow it's a tree view item, and it's an outline item. Derek Reamer left uh, channel. So it tells you what kind of goodies the object can have. So it can have tree view levels, it could be outline level, it could have so all sorts of goodies from accessible and so forth. Below that is Python class MRO, less class NVDA object, start dynamic tree new item outside item accessible greater, less class NVDA object, start accessible dot sys tree new 32 dot tree new item greater, less class NVDA object, start accessible dot outside item greater, less class NVDA object, start accessible dot accessible greater. And all those MRO stands for method resolution order. What it does is Whenever you you use a method from this object, Python will find out where it belongs to. If it belongs to the object that you're dealing with, it'll it'll just do it. If it doesn't, then it'll look up the parent or the the super class, as sometimes it's called. For in this case, if the if whatever that you want to do is found in this this sort of dynamic uh, multiple inherited class, like this uh, team talk entry it'll do it, but if you cannot find it, then first it will look at the tree view item entry, and then the outline entry, and finally to accessible until it finds a method. This is method resolution order, and this is important when we deal with overlay classes and commands, because um, global commands takes precedence, uh, in this case global plugin commands takes precedence, sorry about that, global plugins takes precedence, and then app module and objects. 
So whenever NVIDIA looks up commands for app modules to execute, it will look at uh, commands that's defined in the app module first. If it cannot find it, it will move on to the object that we are dealing with before moving on to other stuff. And finally, to, con con finally to, um, command, uh, to global commands, and if not, it will be passed on to the program. Class, class NVIDIA object description none. Description, uh, these are some of the properties of the object. Could have name, could have description, could have role, could have state. And for NVD world, it could have Python, what kind of Python object it is, and object method resolution order. Location, 511, 391, 67, 16. We'll get to see what it is soon. This is objects, location, and displacement in pixels. The first one is, there are four, this is what's a four tuple, or a collection of four items that are, that are contained in one thing. So first is the, uh, the location on the x-axis, the next is y-axis, and then how wide it is and how tall it is. That's what it tells you, and that's what the op location is. And if you press NVIDIA numpad delete from the team talk trivia item, like this. Object edges position 37.4% from left end of screen, 50.9% from top end of screen, width is 4.9% of screen, height is 2.1% of screen. Right, it comes from location. NVDA. Next up is value. None. value. What kind of value it is? Is this useful for certain things like the progress bars, where it actually tells you how much pro it has progressed, and um, among other things? App module, less TT classic, app name, having talk, find classic, process. Yeah, we've seen that, so. App module dot product, app module product name, name. Dot DK team talk, app module dot product version, U5134500. And right, and then below that would be. Text info, less class NVDA objects, not NVDA object text info greater. Allows you to access text for this uh, uh, object, like uh, in edit fields and whatnot. Window handle, 850. Window handle, it dip, it's relative to the program, that is to say, it changes whenever you load NVDA or protocol program. It's a reference, a window handle, or a simply called handle, is a reference to something. Window class name, Assist Tree View 32. So size, Tree View, Sys Tree View 32. Window class name basically tells, it's the way the, the window, the way Windows tracks what kind of object that it's dealing with, like using a class. Now, these are the properties that Windows provides. Window control ID, 1014. Control ID, these are the way, another way, unique way of identifying a control. Window style, 1,345,380. These are really hexadecimal, but it's translated into integers. And uh, this talks about what kind of style the window uses. It could be, have thick border, it could have a selectable cursor, etc. So these are, uh, technically these are hacks, but it is, Integer. Window thread ID, 7948. The thread that window belongs to, uh, you can have as many routines or thre threads as you want. Window text, you. Display text, Lee. Was it actually written to the screen? Accessible object, less pointer accessible PTR equals 0x7 million three hundred. And these are now, we're getting into where we can actually inspect what actual accessibility APIs tells us. We have the accessible PTR and whatnot. So we are accessible. Accessible child ID, 12. Accessible event parameters. Window handle equals 853,030. And so for the child ID will be, if you have a container like a tree view or list, the position of it, the, the current thing that we're dealing with. That's accessible, that's MSAA specifics. Accessible app name, Joseph Lee. Accessible name that MSAA provides. Accessible app role, role system applied item. There we go. Accessible app state. State system selectable. State system selected. State system focused. State system focusable. State system valid three million one hundred forty-five thousand seven. And so for these are accessible states. Accessible app description none. Accessible app value U one. Debug warning accessible. And so forth. Team talk five. Whereas, say if I open settings, it will give you a completely different information. Settings window. Settings window list system. Like for example. And this is also a preview for the, the session that we held in a few weeks from now. NVDA log viewer, edit I open settings, I focus on what are the category items, I press NVDA F1. And this time, 
What Python object says is this is a UI object. And as opposed to say uh, accessible, UIA contains the following. Python class, app module, app, app, with, 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 with display text, U. And these are the UIA item, so it has uh, UI properties like UI element, less pointer, UI automation element, BTR equals 0 at 66,001. And so forth. UI automation ID, UI framework ID, XML. Uh, so it's a uni it's a powered by the same technology that powers universal apps. UI runtime ID, 42, that's what UIA provides. XML stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. UIA provider description, bit column, UIA class name, print new item, blank. And so forth. These are the with things provided by default. Accessibility APIs. We'll, we will get to Accessibility APIs as the very last topic during this course. So that is that is developer info command, NVIDIA F1, that opens up Lock Viewer and allows you to inspect or take a look at the object that you're dealing with. There are situations where you may think you have landed on the correct object when you might not have, have. And that's because this command looks at the current navigator object that, that NVIDIA is examining. Navigator object is the object that you're interested in. Whereas the focus is the one that the system tells NVIDIA that this is where keyboard is at. So that's object, that's uh, object developer information. I'll be opening Python console, control NVIDIA Z. NVIDIA Python console, greater, greater, greater edit, blank. There are several things that Python console provides when it comes to option navigation. You can do things like focus. Speak type F -U -C -O -S. Symbol F -O -C -U -S. If I type focus from the uh, Python console, Less NVIDIA objects, not dynamic line, three new item outside item accessible object at zero. Whereas if I type NAV, Less NVIDIA objects, not dynamic line, three new item outside item accessible. Uh, there are two ways of getting into Python console. There's the menu, NVIDIA tools, Python console, and there's a shortcut, control NVIDIA Z. The difference is that if you use the shortcut method, control NVIDIA Z, Information that you need to use within the Python console, such as what the foreground object is, what the focus is, what the navigator object is, these will be stored in snapshot variables. Like focus tells you what focus object is, app tells you what the navigator object is, and FG tells you. You can do things like FG.name, NAME. Enter and it'll tell me this. U15 top five classic V dot five point one point three tick greater greater greater. But you may think I have heard about I heard this before. If I go back to team talk, five, team talk and if I press NVIDIA T, team talk five classic V dot five point one point three. And if I return to Python console, NVFG dot name after that name I press up arrow to move to history. U15 top five classic V dot. 5.1.3 greater, greater, greater. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a magic behind say title command. What the say title command does effectively is looking at the foreground object that you're dealing with and it tells you the name if it can find it. Otherwise, we'll say there's no title and so forth. You can I believe it would only do this though if it can find a title bar object. It wouldn't say the name of the current focus no matter what. Right, right. Thanks, Derek. Right, right, right. So that is uh, FG. You can do other things like ANC for ancestors. Or not. No, I'm sorry about that. That's not AFC. I think it's focus and something like that. Yeah, focus ancestors. FDL for focus difference level. As in what is focus versus what actually MVD thinks it is. and. Among other snapshot variables. From Reamer, dot focus and dot. Oh yeah, that focus ank. Thanks for thanks for this. That focus a n c ancestors. And ancestors as in the path that it take Nvidia would take to arrive at a certain object from the whatever that you're dealing with. Uh, there are other methods out there like focus dot name. And if I type them, if I want to find out what the previous object is, it'll be focus dot previous. Okay, so it is another one of those. And if I press type name, like focus dot previous dot name, you take HR mode caddy map slash U0107. Right, sorry about that, William. Uh, there we go. So, how about focus dot next? 
That name. Yeah. There we go. Uh, sorry, Michael. Um, that is what we're dealing with. Is we're actually using the Python console to do sort of an object travel. So that would have been done using keyboard. Now, if I use this particular method, focus that simple previous. That name, for example. F O C U S dot S I M P L E P R E I V I O U S dot N A M E. That's how it's spelled. P has capital. I press enter. Trace map left paren most recent call left right paren colon file quote left console breaker quote comma line one comma in less module breaker attribute error colon tick dynamic line tree new item outside item accessible tick on get has no attribute tick simple previous tick breaker breaker breaker. Sometimes it says that. Um, I don't know why it's doing this. Let me try focus that simple next. That name. Trace map left paren most recent call left right paren colon file quote left console breaker quote comma line one comma in less module breaker attribute error colon tick none type tick on get has no attribute tick name tick breaker breaker breaker. Wow, that's interesting indeed. Um, that's interesting. What had no name? The next object had no name. Simple next. Joseph Lee tree, oh. tree vertical scroll bar 14 used to change the vertical viewing in horizontal graphic. Michael Joseph Lee. I don't know what. So sometimes these are ways of navigating between objects. Uh, simple next, simple previous, and sometimes you can do things like and be blank. focus Please. that. Yeah. There. Um, Please note that you should not use simple next and simple previous in your code. Um, because it's using heuristics that could change at any time to select that and it's much lower. Name dot, uh, yeah, so thanks, Ethan. Right, so because it, the, the way NVIDIA treats layout objects and unnecessary objects, it can change. The way it uses simple next and simple previous is by using heuristics to decide what to show the user. Right, so... You should not rely too much on these uh, simple uh, proper simple star properties. That's what it's called. Thanks, Derek. And if you can get to it with simple something, you can always get to it another way with the other properties. Right, using several con focus that next that next that next etc. Now let me do this. If I type something like focus that next that next that name. Should tell me this. Trace map left paren most recent call left right paren colon file quote left console breaker quote comma line one comma in less module breaker attribute error colon tick dynamic line tree new item outside item accessible tick on get has no attribute tick next tick breaker break focus not next not next not in blank. Let me try focus that previous. Trace map left paren most recent Joseph Lee HR Joseph and blank. Wow. There we go. I I don't know how it but. Uh, yes, not, uh, Focus the previous, the previous name says. You take Ethan, take. Breaker, breaker, breaker. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, uh, so, sorry about that. So this is Focus the previous, the previous that name. What it did, what I did just now is I have traversed the next two and previous two elements without using the keyboard, without using immediate numpad, left and right arrows. Uh, so you can do all sorts of things here. You can do uh, focus the next and next and so forth. You can even do something like some obs equals focus that next that next. Nothing. So let me try object. Object equals focus that parent that parent. Let me move up one more level. That. And what does object name says? Obj that name. What I did was I assigned something to the grandparent of the focus element, the tree view that we're focused on. Trace map left paren most recent call left right paren colon file quote left console breaker quote comma line one comma in less module breaker name error colon name tick arch tick is not defined arch not an op equals o p b j oops b j b b b there we go b o b j breaker 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 um arch not name breaker 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 nothing so it says channel message from Derek Reamer dot Joseph comma can you explain for people why the end of the tree is done question it's tick as important to understand why that example fails dot dot Right. Uh, so Derek posted a great question. Thanks, Derek, for uh, for stopping me there. Now it fails because is it has nowhere to go afterwards. Is it what's called an edge? 
so you cannot go any further than that. So it'll state something like if you're using keyboard, for example. Joseph Leach, Michael Chopra, not sit, no next. You hear no next. No next. Which means that you have arrived at the edge of the current uh, object hierarchy. So you have to either move up, move down, or do something, or move, in this case, move to previous objects, like... Joseph Lee, HR, Ethan, Levy, not Derek, Reamer, no previous, no previous. No previous. Tree new, vertical scroll, tree new, no objects inside. And so on, so... Mike Joseph if, right, it fails because, uh, the, because we are in the edge. Mike voice acted, tab control, chat dialogue, next, next, less Eric Reamer, greater the edge next, being done or what not, next, being done or what, next, being, next, being, next, being, next, being, next, being, next, being, next, yeah. Type a message, treat you, Joseph Lee. Yeah, it might be a cursor issue, so thanks. Thanks, Derek. So it's important to remember that if it fails, if you want to use focus on next and next, next whatever, map that next, whatever, whatever, if it fails somehow because you have arrived perhaps at the edge of the hierarchy in question, the current level in this case. So that is, that is usually how people would use Python console, at least to look at siblings and parents. What gets interesting though are uh, children. Children will be objects that this particular object contains. And to go through that, we will be using foreground window for team talk. NVDA Python console breaker break. Uh, first of all, I need to, can, team talk, can you tell me how many components you have for your user interface? To do that, I will type in F -G dot C -H -I -L -D -C -O -U -N -D. If I remember right, 14 breaker breaker breaker. 14. This is an attribute, not a function, not a method. It's an attribute. So there are 14 components, UI components in this particular window or team talk. When I type this FG, that child count with the second C having being in the capital. What it tells us is how many components or children does a particular object have? That was for foreground object, but now if I try it for a focus object, Enter. Zero. Breaker, breaker, breaker. It tells us that we're at the bottom of the hierarchy for this uh, for this particular level. And uh, sometimes some app module writers would say things like if fg child count is greater than or something, that tells us that we're dealing with the correct object. Or you can say if obs child count greater than or whatever. So to, in order to at least narrow down the object that we're interested in working with in our app modules. Now, one thing we can do, and this will be an actual exercise, is this. You know how many foreground op components it has for Team Talk. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to navigate to the first child, which, if I remember right, is one of the toolbars or menu bars. FG. F I R S D T A I L D. Enter. Less NVDA objects not accessible. Not window root object at zero x zero five one four f three f zero. And what kind of role is this? That R O L E. F G dot first child dot role one breaker breaker breaker. It's a window. Uh, it's control types at py that has all the constants for roles. Now, what about the name? Breaker breaker breaker. What about state? S T A T E S. Set left paren left bracket sixteen million seven hundred seventy seven thousand two hundred sixty right bracket right paren greater greater greater. Yeah, so it's yeah, so there we go. Uh, so that's the uh, so at least something kind of root window is there. What about the last component or the last object? F G dot A F D C H I L D. What is this? Less NVDA objects not accessible. Not window root object at zero. At zero Another four. window root object, and this time it should have the name of nothing. Well, technically, it's what's called an empty string. And what kind of row is this? Or kind in this case, row uh, it is. Now let me uh, move to one of the child objects. Fg dot first child. Not child count. Okay, seven children for the first UI component. Now let me move to the first child of this. Less NVDA objects not accessible. Not content generic client object at zero x zero fifty FA five hundred ninety grid. What this code? FG not first child not first child. What this did was it had moved to it has now navigated to the first UI component or child of the foreground window. 
and from there we move down to its first children. So if I say something like name, nothing. Role, unknown. So uh, you can do things that you can do for FJ that first child, the first child, and so forth. Uh, now, if you want to move the specific object in question from each parent when parent object, you would do you can do two things. Type in two different uh, ways. You can do either F -E dot C H I L D R E N left bracket I N D E F right bracket F E dot children left bracket index right bracket. But uh, Derek Reamer, I and others found out that according to Jamie Tay from NV Access, this is quite slow. So the left, recommended right, right, method, right. recommended method is F E dot P. E D T A I L D left paren I N D E F right paren. So F D not get child left paren index right paren. It's a lot faster, up to several times. Channel message from Derek Reamer dot Joseph Thomas. May I explain to people why it took us so not? Yes, please. Derek wants to tell you why the performance differences. One of the reasons it's slow uh, is when you're doing these things, it may not appear. It appears like you're accessing a variable when you do something like obj.children. But what's happening behind the scenes, there's an advanced feature in Python called properties. So when you say obj.children, a method called underscore get underscore children is called. And that method goes through and makes a list of all the children by calling dot next on after you get to the first child until it hits the end. Um, and then it returns a list of the children and then you iterate into that list and find the object you want so you have to construct a list of all of the children and then you go and get to see which child you want um whereas get child is a method taking a number argument and for most apis um you can just say object get child four and it'll only get the fourth child rather than making an entire list. Actually, uh, their fifth child. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It starts at zero. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Don't worry. So, right, in computer, many languages like Python and C and whatnot, index starts at zero. So if you say something, left bracket, zero, right bracket, you're effectively saying, I want the first object. And in Python, there's a real great trick where if you put in a negative number, it tells it says to Python, I want the this position from the from uh, the last. So it will be reverse iterating it. So say if you type something like fg that children not recommended, but fg that children left bracket negative two right bracket dash two right bracket, it will say I want the second to last object. So that's what's happening here. So let me try using fg.getChild. Let me try getting the third uh, component, which is number two. Yay, a great access point. Let me assign it to a variable. A typical obj. That's... Now, there are other properties out there that you can use to narrow the scope of the object that we're looking at we saw name we saw role we saw states we saw value were we looking at value okay, not v -A -L -U -E. greater, greater, greater. and object but sometimes you may find that some of the objects are quite generic you can have a generic name generic role generic states and whatnot one way we can find out if the object that we're interested in is the one that we're looking for what that we're dealing with is one that we're looking for is looking at window properties like this obj that what i type this what this will return is this gives us the class of this particular object or class in this context means the string that identifies what kind of class the object it is there are many different kinds of uh, window class names out there. Like there's a 
some of them are very very generic like you are when what there's some of the universal apps that have really generic class names there there are certain uh containers like tree views and tables that actually have some really quite um uh i would say a bit very quite very interesting class names so sometimes you would use this particular method to find out if the object that you're working with right now is the one that you're really interested in next up we have okay, object that window w. uh C. Child, H. not C. Child. W W C not C window C F E I D trace left Oh oops. It might be something else. Uh let me look at OBJ that window tab twice. So if I press tab once like you heard a beep and if I press twice, you heard you start you heard that in a menu has appeared. This is autocomplete. There we go. And class name you saw control ID is just a control ID that the win that application provides for this control. Window handle, handle that Windows provides. Window style style. Window text, window text. Window thread ID, thread ID window class name, and so forth. Window control, ID, control ID says. And so forth. The other things that we can work with, like accessible and so forth, like offstart. It'll tell you the position zero. Breaker, breaker, breaker. zero. So basically, it means that we're basically working with specific. We're dealing with like generic like window and buttons and whatnot. Child ID will be greater than zero if you're working with say containers like tree view and list views and all those so those are the ways you can narrow the scope down different uh apis like msa my accessible and ui have a different uh ui properties and for example for sorry UI, yes um uh, it gives me the, <coughs> sorry it gives me an error working with obj dot something Okay, uh, which, what, uh, which error are you getting? I'll paste it to the chat. And sometimes, if you open Python console, you can get that error by pressing F6. It toggles between the edit field and the output window. Now, for, as I'm waiting for the text chat for the error message, for the UIA, it's different. For UIA, you get something like settings win personalization not selected for a time. NVDA. You can get something like uh channel message from Danny dot trace map left paren most recent call left right paren colon dot channel message from Danny dot file quote less console breaker quote comma line one comma in less module breaker dot channel message from Danny dot name error colon name tick arch tick is not defined dot because you have to um define the object. This case, you have to assign something to a variable called OBJ. That's why, my, my apology. So OBJ equals something, like an object. Now for the UIA, we have uh, focus.uia element. And among other things, you have element.cache class name. It's cache for performance reasons. And among other things. We'll get to knowing, we'll get to visiting accessible UI and whatnot later. But I think for now, those are some of the things that you can use to narrow down the object that you are dealing with to make sure that you obtain the object in question. Um, are there any questions at this point or anything before we move on to exercises? So, yeah, uh, is there any way to uh, clear Python console uh, without exiting NVDA? I don't think no. so. So, the only way is to restart NVDA. Yeah, generally you don't need to clear it though. Um, I wonder, you might be able to do os.system left paren quote cls quote right paren. I don't know what that would actually do. Yeah, this may eventually help because <clears throat> uh, if I get a lot of lines in console, it's hard to manage. 
uh, I mean, while moving through history, yeah. True, right, right. And especially also if it imported a lot of more stuff in there. And uh, One thing you could do is print, like, backslash n times 20. Ah, oh, nice tip. Or a thousand or something, and it would just scroll the entire window really big. Oh, that trick I didn't know. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so Joseph, basically what you're trying to say is that <clears throat> app modules basically run under what window, under everything on, sorry, app modules run <clears throat> under basically everything on Windows, is that correct? Or am I assuming wrong who was happening here? Uh, Michael, could you elaborate a bit? Uh, thanks. Okay, what I'm trying to say is... <clears throat> um, so basically every program in Windows has this app module thing, is that correct? Is that what you're trying to say here, or what are you trying to say? Hmm, interesting. Uh, if I understand you right, uh, you might be you are asking about Windows and app modules and whatnot. Unless if I'm wrong, um, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right. Objects of Windows, right. Um, so, what's going on is that if I heard, if I understand right, um, app modules basically you will be dealing with a lot of like Windows. So basically, you'll be dealing with objects, the controls really. For the most part, so the, the as long as the app module lives, it'll deal with. If told to do so, it'll deal with objects that are part of the app. So you can say, for example, from the app module, you can say, if something happens to this particular slider, announce it. You can tell the NVDA keep an eye on changes to this particular name changes to this particular control. You can tell NVDA to say, I want this announced using a script. Mm, right. So you can have a you can have a command that says if I press a command if I press this particular command the app module should tell me what's out there for a specific component like like a toolbar state or like a value of a slider or the name of the one of the status bar items and whatnot so you can do traversals on its own you can tell it to do traversals on its own given that uh, if you know the path. Like using previous, next, shout and whatnot, and then you can do all sorts of things that it did. Next week is where we actually get into one of the tricks that NVIDIA provides, and that's event handling, where NVIDIA can keep an eye on like which mm. control gets focus, changes to values, and whatnot. <clears throat> all right, so let's move to exercises. Um, before we do that, uh, I will be introducing you to a module that app module writer should be familiar with and that's the API module is cryptically named but it provides some of the most essential services that you'll be dealing with when you run app modules global plugins and whatnot so let me open python console again NVDA. and if i remember api is already one of those that are available api less module tick api tick from tick c colon map slash program files left paren f 86 right paren map slash nvda map slash library dot zip map slash api dot tick tick greater greater yeah pyc that's because i'm running a snapshot if you have a stable version it will say api dot pyo uh so API is one of those op modules that are loaded automatically when you open Python console, among with speech, Braille, UI, and what, if I remember right, is uh, UI is not imported. So API, it is API module is imported. And there's SYS, it's a system module, just provides some of the system services, like sys.getWindows version. And so API module contains some of the great essential uh, functions that you need when you're dealing with objects among other things it contains things like get the status bar get the focus object get the foreground copy something to clipboard set current set specific object as a focus object at least that's what NVDA thinks it is among other things so say if i'm writing a module for a team talk but in reality 
Doug Lee, a great respected uh, app module writer, has written the app module for us already. So if I say API dot what this would tell us is and if I might oh that's because I have called API the get focus object while I'm in Python console so that's why I think I think I got confused but the snapshot object does already provides this and so on. So let me, how about navigator object, API dot Now, the API the get focus object will tell you, the function will tell you what focus object MVD thinks it is, at least what the window tells MVD what the focus object is. Get navigator object as a function to retrieve the navigator object that MVD thinks is what it is. Yes, MVD is not dynamic line accessible edit window MVD object object at zero. Right, that's the Python console. Now, the foreground object, API that get as the name implies, API not get foreground object left paren right paren. Less NVD object not accessible not accessible object at zero x zero five one one da ninety three. It's a bit misleading because it's Python console, but when you're calling all these from app modules themselves, it will actually tell you uh, if you focus on the app that is, it will actually tell you what the correct foreground object is. Uh, there's a specific kind of object that actually same across all apps for the duration of the session, and this is API dot G E D D E S D K O P P O K D S S K D O P O space space B O O O type O B J E C D left right paren API dot get left top object left paren right paren. What this function will do is it will return the shell object. The root of all objects at this moment. Now, you may recall me telling you uh, that you can use location to find out what the object where the object lives, located and displacement. And for one of the trivial items in Team Talk is uh, how it works. Can you think of a trick that you can use? Say. You have found this desktop object, and if you understood right that desktop object is root of all objects, can you think of a trick that you can use to bring in, bring a very interesting feature to life? So if I type something like API get what do you think it will return? It will return this. Left paren zero comma zero comma one thousand three hundred sixty six comma seven hundred sixty eight right paren greater 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 screen resolution. So that's one. How did you get that? There was. Did I not get left top object left paren right paren dot location? Ah, oh, cool. So we can use that to obtain screen resolution because it's root of all UI components or objects. That's why I can tell you the screen resolution for this. And you can if you put your screen in portrait mode, for example, you can actually tell by this particular call that you are in portrait because portrait has higher uh, Y values. There's a specific event that Windows can process that actually can tell if you are in landscape and portrait. It can tell you what variant it is, primary or secondary. What I was thinking is, could you do something like use proportions of the screen to figure out where an object is. Um, for example, take the desktop object's location to get the screen resolution, figure out where an object is on the screen based off the top left coordinate uh, proportion across the screen. If you want to, you could try that. Uh, note that screen, screen resolution uh, this is technically not the physical resolution, as we know. Um, when we deal with screen objects and screen, screen re resolution, we're dealing with virtualized ones.
So it may not represent the physical resolution. So we have to be careful about that. Uh, you can try using coordinates to find out. You can use screen resolution and use coordinates for the current object to find out what kind of object that you're dealing with. But remember that there are different screen resolutions for different people. P different people use th different screen resolutions across different monitors. So if you do that, uh, I would say it could work for some in cases, but not all. So generally, the best method, uh, the best method would be to uh, use uh, parent-child sibling relationships, as well as looking for specific attributes like window class name, uh, name, state, what kind of control it is, and whatnot. <clears throat> So uh, now you know how to get the foreground object and whatnot. Here's the first exercise for you. Um, open your, the app that you're working on, the app module for the app that you're working on. Well, in this case, open the app that you're writing the app module for. Once you open it, once the app module gains, once the app gains focus, press Control NVIDIA Z, which will tell you. Uh, what it's the Python, it'll open Python console and using the FG variable, the snapshot for the current foreground object, write a function that tells you how many UI components your app has. And I'll give you the answer in a few minutes. <laughs> Do you mean distinct NVDA objects or only UI components like tree view items? UI components as in the first level children. Oh, so like just the okay. first level children of it. Okay. My idea was to import the UI library and to UI.message and FG.childCount. But it doesn't work. Interesting solution. Okay, that's very. Do you know why that doesn't work? Um, no. Uh, can you read the error it gives off? I'll paste it. I think that's a better idea. Sure. But Daniela gave a very interesting interesting solution. Anybody have any other solutions that they came up with? So it's not quite the same issue I got, but it's the same issue as trying to print out a number or to speak a number. You have to convert it to a string first. So you're trying to print a number and that number is what's called an int or an integer, which is just a whole number. And Python or NVDA expects to be able to speak and braille a string. Um, so there's a function called str. Try wrapping it in that. Right. And if right. you ever want to print out a number, you've got to do that. And Derek, what issue did you come in, come across? He was saying it didn't work when he tried to speak ui.message the fg. Right. Right. And I was just trying to explain to him why that occurs. Uh, I might be, it might be her or him, I'm sorry about that. Her, um, sorry. It might be her or him, I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> about this if it would turn an empty string, that means there's no children. And there, what issue did you come across? The traceback she pasted in, is it a she? I don't know, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So. Anybody else have any solution? Anyone else? The solution that Daniela came with was uh, was one of those that uh, was in mind. So the complete solution, which we've written to the text chat window, as well as the Python console to tell you is, if you want to follow along, you can follow along with me. The one that I had in mind was, am I transmitting? There we go. You are transmitting. All right, so the, the, the complete solution that I had in mind. You're e speaks to something. 
Oh, there we go. Right for F, right for colon, face. B R I M D, face. F E R T A I L D T O U M D. This is the solution that I had in mind, but Naniola did a very excellent way of letting you actually hear and get this information braille. So Daniela has a solution. Left component count left paren right paren colon print fg dot child count dot 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 blank greater 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 and if I do component B component count left right paren 14 greater 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 14 because it has 14 UI components so the solution is master mic what temp dialogue blank type a message so complete solution is Whatever that F and whatever function that you'd like to give it, left paren, right paren, colon, print, API, dot get, F O E G U D O E G E T D, left right paren, dot, C F E T U N, F U O T T O U N D, F F N, left paren, right paren, colon, print, API, dot get, forward, run, dot get, left paren, right paren, dot, child count, channel message, run, dot, tree, new. That is the solution. You can, if you want, experiment with this. Uh, for the next few days that is the way that you would get it but the the complete solution in the app module form is this import API import app module handler import UI blank class app module left paren app module handler dot app module right paren colon tab ffn left paren self right paren colon tab tab fg equals api dot get forward run dot get left paren right paren tab tab ui dot message left paren quote forward run plus left race num right race component quote dot format left paren num equals arch dot child count right paren right paren blank so you can wrap it in a string and uh, as you saw last time when we were dealing with the script it would say foreground has this number of components and or similar to that so this is sort of a minimum solution for the app in the app module form now here is a variant of this exercise and you can do it if you want over the next few days write a script that automates this for you that uh, this could be a great experiment uh, for you when you when we combine what we learned last time in scripts and object navigation that is something that uh, if you want you can try it now or if you want to prefer to wait for a few days you could if you want so the problem statement is suppose a user or you perhaps want to find out how many ui components your app has your app module the, the given app has and you, you're not sure as to you want to go to python console you want to go to option navigation manually or not so perhaps you want to write a script or a routine that's executed when you press a command that will actually tell you number of UI components, how many foreground objects children it has. So the exercise is write a script that does this automatically for you and assign it to a command. And that uh, hopefully could be a great experiment slash exercise for you for the next few days. That's the variant of what we just did uh, right now. Okay, uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. How can, wow. how can I check um, this everyday spoken something when I use ui.message on, well, well, in the Python console? Sorry about that. So to check that, uh, you would use log level of input output from general settings. Go to general settings, go to log level login level and then select input output and then whenever nvidia says something it will be logged to the log viewer so whenever you you write that message press f and after you type that press nvidia f1 and it will say you are it will say input uh i think it's io dot and then it will say string that message string or very it is, and it'll say what it did, what it said via UI that message. So it's locked if you set the input lock level to input output. Thanks. Any other questions at this point? Because um, I think there's one more exercise that people can try, and this time dealing with narrowing the scope of an object. Okay, here's a second exercise you can try this week uh, in a few days. Um, then, and this might be the last thing we talk about today. 
before we resume with events next week. For those who listen to the radio, to the archives, it'll be next session. Let's say you are writing an app module for a specific app. And suppose there is somewhere a status bar. But you don't know which position the status bar is in the UI components or the child of the immediate children of the foreground object. Can you come up with a script that would tell you which position is the status bar? And the status bar constant from control types is row equals 27. So do you mean uh, screen coordinates or? Screen coordinates as in status bar or? Yes, yeah, so if I have to find the position of status bar, should I uh, return a result in screen coordinates or something, something else? What you can do, you can do, you can go in various variants. You can do screen coordinates if you want, or you can do, you can actually return the res the actual position, and this will involve as a hint, a for loop or a while loop depends on what, however you wish to achieve this. But for now, let's just say um, coordinates. Okay. Um, where can I find the list of row meanings? Okay. Uh, so which number represents which row? There is a module called uh, control types.py that's part of NVIDIA source code that lists constants for rows. So some of the well-known constants would be like, or I believe it's eight for edit fields and twenty-seven for status bars, and there are this is listed in that uh, in that uh, in the uh, in that uh, file. What you can do instead of looking at the actual integer is you can do something like if this dot row if this object dot row equals equals control types dot row underscore whatever, something like this. Let me show you. So say I'm in a Python console and I don't know what kind of role, uh, say I'm looking for a specific role. Import. Input help on and we import control types. Greater, greater, greater. T has a capital. Two, two. And say, I want to find out if the object is this particular role. Focus. Space. Equals, double two equals means yes. Two equals means comparison. Single equals is assignment. Two equals is comparison. In this case, it's asking if it's the same as control that all capitals s d a d u s b a r Focus equals equals control type dot row line status bar f o c u f space dot row. There we go. Focus dot row equals equals control type dot row line status bar. Pause. Greater greater greater. It's not a status bar. So that is one way. So that is you don't have to deal with the actual integers. You can just say control type dot all caps row underscore and the actual row names. Channel message from Derek Reamer dot go over control type dot row labels dot. Role labels, yes. Uh, very good question. And this actually, uh, thanks for, uh, I forgot about this. So, you may recall, uh, talk about, we talk about object properties, and one of them being roles. And the role labels is a dictionary or a map within control types that shows you the, the roles constant and what the human representation, human readable representation is. So, for example, if I do something like control types that there we go. Row labels is R O L E and the capital L and then lowercase A B E L S. Control types not row labels. Left race zero colon. You tick unknown tick comma one colon. You tick window tick comma two colon. You tick title bar tick comma three colon. You tick paint tick comma four colon. You tick dialog tick comma. So for example, you heard all of those controls. Control this left. time, if I type in twenty seven, for seven. example, right you'll hear this. You tick status bar tick. Greater, greater, greater. So it tells you 
the what the controls that const row constants maps to what the human readable representation is. So example, if I typed in control types at row labels, left bracket, 27 right bracket, it'll tell me it's a status bar. So that is a handy way of looking up which constant correspond to which uh, row names. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, thanks Derek for reminding me about this. And right, it's important that we talk about this because of different controls of different roles. And sometimes what happens is, and I found out when I talked to Derek the other day about Thunderbird, what happens is that there might be controls that might be a bit interesting. What I mean by interesting is that you have one control that it expects to obey a certain control role. It might be a different specific role that you're thinking of, but in fact, the app says is something else. Like for example, you have a tree view, you have a trivial item, but then the actual way it's shown is a table. It was a tree view where the last child is a multi-column list. Right, so it's a very important to find out what the rule set, what the rule is based on what the app tells you. So, so that's kind of very interesting things. Like we have checkboxes that are arranged into lists. We have this sort of list checkbox, list checklist boxes. We have tables that are really um, list views. We have tree views that are really tables, collapsed and collapsed, rows being collapsed, rows being expanded, and all those things. Sometimes there are toggle buttons that are really checkboxes and a lot of things that are like quite interesting. So the problem statement for exercise two is write a script that goes through goes through the first UI components looking for a specific role and return this coordinates. In this case, the role that we're looking for is status bar. Hope you, hope you, um, and, and uh, if you'd like to implement it right now, feel free, but if you want, you can wait a few days and implement it whenever you are free. And then if you want to, the third is, uh, the third exercise is, Perhaps you want to write an app module that plays a specific tone when a, con when a specific control gets focused. And this is a preview for next week. Is, can you come up, can you research, is there a way that you can tell NVIDIA to play a tone when you encounter a specific control, when it gets focused? Can you come up with a way to do this? not writing code yet this is a preview for next week so good luck also if you want to do it this is an extra thing for you so uh, are there any questions comments so far regarding the whole thing that we talked about objects hierarchies attributes uh api that star functions and other things and feel free to experiment using object traversals using code uh using python console and scripts and app modules and uh, whatnot. If there's none, let's call it a day. Uh, for those who are here live, uh, the next session on events will be July 23rd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So it'll be 1800 hours UTC on July 23rd, 2016. So we will talk about events. And following that, it will be overlay classes, hopefully July 30th, the same time, 11 a.m. PET. So overlay classes will be the one where we actually get to see scripts, events, and objects in action. And then after that, we'll have a, and after that will be accessibility APIs. And if you want to do a presentation, if you want to present your app module, feel free. So that'll be what's coming up for the next few weeks. And so with that, uh, if you have any more questions, um, hearing none for now, let's call it a day. Good luck with some of the exercises and please do, if you want, experiment with what you heard about today. Object hierarchy, attributes, AI, API start functions, and so forth. And see you for those listening to uh, recordings. Uh, see you in the next session. And for those listening to you live, see you next week. All about events. Thanks very much.